Hello everybody, um, my name is Daniel Cooper, I'm a seminarian for the Diocese of Knoxville and I've been welcomed back by the Adult Faith Formation team to do another clergy conversation here at St. Thomas the Apostle Church. I'm very happy to be back with all of you. Um, last time we talked a bit about the Jewish roots of the Mass and so this time I thought I would take a little bit of a different approach in the hopes of drumming up some maybe new vocations to the priesthood, to religious life, to the diaconate. Um, and talk a bit about formation and what that looks like in a seminary context. You know, I am very fascinated whenever I read the Gospels by the hidden years of Christ and how we don't really hear much beyond his appearance in the temple to the beginning of his public ministry at the age of 30. And those silent years that scripture is really not much help with really kind of intrigue me. And in some ways the seminary is a similar thing. You know, most people just see the priest and assume that they're born that way. I know before considering priesthood myself, I quite frankly thought the same thing, but there is a place in which they learn, in which they grow, in which they come to understand their calling and explore that to the full. Um, so talking a bit about seminary formation, you kind of have to get a base understanding. So the way that seminary formation works um, is that it comes through in four different dimensions. So the, the USCCB or the United States College of Catholic Bishops puts out a document called the Program for Priestly Formation. Um, it's a document that kind of guides seminaries and how they form young men for the priesthood. Within that document it specifies that there are four key areas that the man as he is studying needs to be addressed in before ordination to the priesthood and those are human, intellectual, spiritual, and pastoral. Once upon a time they were called pillars and the language has changed to be more of dimension to kind of show how these different areas intersect with one another rather than being separate individual blocks. The building, the building block, if you will, for all formation um, starts in this human formation dimension. Um, it's how the man is formed as a human person. Not just shoving them into the box of a priest, checking off all the things. Does he know how to say, say the mass? Does he know how to hear confessions? Does he know how to anoint the sick and be with the dying? All of those things come, but if the human level isn't established first, the rest is all for naught. Um, that looks different to a lot of different people. Within the formation of the seminary, it takes the the form of understanding who you are as a person. And that can be painful for a lot of people. Um, when we come in, we're coming in with a central question. Am I called to be a priest? None of us can answer that question day one, and none of us are expected to, thanks be to God, because for the most part, we all come in with all kinds of problems. Some of us are complete train wrecks, myself included. But the time in formation in that human dimension allows one to essentially hold up a mirror with the help of the formation staff and with the help of your brother seminarians to kind of look at who you are, come to understand who you are as a person and figure out how that fits in to a possible priestly ministry in the future. You know, we undertake a lot of different activities to form us as a human person. All of that looks different for each individual person, but it's a unique thing within the seminary in which you put 50 to 100 guys all together from all different walks of life, and suddenly now they're expected to become friends or at the very least support one another through prayer. And what that brings about is just nothing short of amazing. Going from that human formation realm, um, the next logical step would be spiritual. Um, spiritual formation takes various different tracks. Um, for the most part, people would understand it as prayer. And it is that. It, it's, it's very much prayer. It's very much coming to a relationship with Christ and an understanding of who he is in the life of the man as he's for, being formed for the priesthood. But it is so much deeper in a lot of ways. 
The spiritual formation allows one to understand exactly who Christ is for that person and develop that one-on-one -on -one relationship with him to sustain himself in future ministry. We go to Mass, we pray the Liturgy of the Hours, but there's all kinds of other areas in which the spiritual intersects. We talk with a spiritual director at least every three weeks. We participate in our own private devotional life in the public devotions that are offered through the Rosary or Eucharistic Adoration, pilgrimages. These are all things that allow for the spiritual life of the man to be f developed, to be nourished, you know, in order to be able to give oneself in the ministry of the priesthood, you have to be able to have a well from which you draw. And if you're not, pretty soon you run dry and have nothing else to give to the people that you're serving. And so the spiritual formation section of the seminary is extremely important, not just within the context of the seminary, but it's also that, br that bridge, that building stone from which you're able to carry it on into your other life, be that into priestly ministry or if you, dis if you discern that you're not called to be a priest, the formation that you develop in the spiritual realm is something that you carry with you for the rest of your life. It allows you to deepen your friendship and your relationship with God in a way that is unlike anything else. Pastoral formation is one that many people don't really know what occurs. I certainly didn't before entering the seminary. And this is part of that hidden life of the seminarian that I think a lot of people don't really recognize. You know, when we leave the diocese to go and study for the priesthood at a seminary, sometimes hours or thousands of miles away, depending on where one is, we're not really seen much back in the diocese other than our summer assignments or back home for Christmas or Easter. But there's a whole lot of work that goes into forming how you interact with people and how you develop the skills to be able to be an effective minister in the future. And that pastoral formation piece really hones in on that. We're assigned to different places throughout the area of our seminary community. Some of us go as far away as an hour or two away. But it's all in the goal to develop your public persona in a ministerial context. We're put in places where we're teaching CCD, or we're serving at a boys and girls club, or we're helping at a food pantry, or we're walking with people through something like Stephen Ministry. All of these things help us to understand the life of the priest in a way that you don't get just by reading a book or learning how to say words at the Mass or learning how to say the prayer of absolution. These are real hands-on encounters with people in a controlled way that allow us to practice our pastoral ability, allow us to meet people where they are in a way that doesn't that doesn't grant the inherent risk necessarily that a priest has. We, we serve with a supervisor. We are having one-on-one -on -one meetings to discuss our encounters with people and learning that, okay, well, this was good, keep doing this, or maybe take a different path here. It's sort of that safety net to be able to practice those pastoral skills and, and hone your ministerial ability in ways that you don't get outside of the seminary formation. Those three dimensions all feed into one another. Those three dimensions are the ones in which most people don't see. You know, the human formation builds the man, creates confidence in the person, allows him to accept who he is for his strengths, his weaknesses, his faults and his failings, and incorporate all of that into, God willing, a future priest. The spiritual and the pastoral give him the abilities to understand what he does and who he's doing it for and the help that it provides to those people that he encounters and allows him the opportunity to say, 
this is something that I can do. This is something that I'm comfortable with. Probably the most well-known, at least in most circles, um, the most well-known piece of formation is the intellectual dimension. You know, the church in her wisdom wants priests who can discuss the truths of the faith, who can teach the truths of the faith in a way that's inherently true and in line with the spirit of the church and church teaching. We don't need individuals who have a lack of understanding or a lack of clarity with regard to basic church teaching. And so the church in her wisdom realizes that the intellectual component is extremely important, which is why the seminary formation path can take for some of us six years, some eight, some even longer. Being able to understand and grasp on to those truths and those teachings in a way that allows you to internalize it and allows you to take it to heart, to take it to prayer, to be able to turn around and pour it out to those that you minister to. All four of these areas of formation work together to create a well-rounded individual by the time one is done in seminary formation. You know, when you walk in the doors of the seminary, you have no idea what you're getting into. You're, in some cases, leaving a career, leaving your family, leaving your home to enter an uncertain future. And to a lot of people, myself included, that can be a very scary prospect. It can create some fears and anxieties of, what if I fail? What if I don't understand? What if I don't fully comprehend what I'm being asked to do? Or what if I don't fully have the ability to commit to what I'm doing? All of those questions, all of those fears are things that are worked out through the process. You know, as we continue through formation, we take incremental steps. And those steps allow us to reflect more deeply on where we are, where we've been, and where hopefully we're going. And at the end of the day, the seminary is not a factory to churn out one priest after another into a cookie cutter mold that fits the bill, that can fill a space and say mass and perform the sacraments and administer a church. It's a place of discernment. That, that, that word discernment is kind of heavy. It's kind of weighty. And it's a word that's misunderstood more often than not. Yeah, in the seminary we play games, we're hanging out with one another, we're going to mass, we're going to class, we're going to different functions of the seminary. We're learning from one another, we're learning from our formators, we're learning from people in the community. And all of that's true, and all of that occurs. But interiorly, we're constantly asking ourselves, we're constantly engaging in a conversation with Christ and with His church to say, am I called to this? Do I feel that God is continuing to lead me toward the priesthood? Do I feel that Christ is giving me the gifts and the graces that I need? to be able to perform ministry in his church. Those questions never stop. They get easier as time goes on. They get more certain as time goes on, but they never stop. And if one leaves the seminary, they're better for having been there. I have known people who have left the seminary, who are now married, who are excellent fathers, and it's all because of the formation that they received at the seminary. Many people question, well, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And the important thing for anybody to remember with seminary formation is that you're not called to the seminary. You're called to the seminary to discern whether you're called to be a priest, but you're not called to the seminary itself. The seminary is a very short window of time in comparison to a life, in comparison to a life of ministry or a life of married or a life of consecrated service.
it's a relatively short time, but it's a very, very critical time to form oneself, to inform oneself, and to in interact with Christ and His Church and those around you in order to come to an understanding of who you are, what you are, and how you want to continue forward and how God is calling to continue forward. Everybody I talk to, young and old, has the same question. What does discernment in the seminary look like? It's different for every single person. There is no cookie cutter mold to say, this is how one must discern, this is how one must approach seminary formation, this is how one must understand the process. If it were that simple, anybody could enter seminary and be a priest in three years. The fact that it takes so long, the fact that you're engaging constantly in this process of questioning, of answering, of asking new questions to those answers you've received, allows you the time to deepen your own sense of self, your own sense of who God is and who you are in relationship to Him. I would encourage anybody, any young man who's considering, maybe I'm called to be a priest, ask the question. It never hurts to investigate whether or not this is something that you're called to. It never hurts to decide, I want to try this out. You know, if you ask yourself the question all day long, should I be a priest? Should I, be, should I become a religious? Should I be married? Should I live a life of single nature? You never really know the answer to that question until you try it. I didn't know the answer to whether I should even consider the priesthood until I decided with the help of others to go to the seminary. It's that step of faith that can make all the difference in anybody's life. And it's not just the same call for people to explore the seminary. The same call is for those of any vocation, marriage, religious life. Take the step, investigate the options. But don't spend time questioning what if. We can question what if all day long. It doesn't matter unless you take a step and make the choice. At the end of the day, seminary formation is a wonderful experience. It's not for everybody, but you never know that until you try. Our vocations office is willing to talk to you, regardless of what you might be considering, religious life, priesthood, diaconate, they're willing to have the conversation. It's a wonderful resource within the diocese to investigate the option, to be able to talk with somebody who can help guide you on the path to answers. Give it a shot. Consider it and make the step. Thank you.